Well, hi, little Isaac. I was going to get up because I have things to do. But little Munchie came to sit on my lap, and she settled in so cozily and warm on this rainy day that she just loves the story time with you. She just loves it. Munchie, Munchie, wait. I'm trying to get you on camera so you can say hi. There we go. There. That face. That face. That face. Okay. Let's begin. But we'll do another story for at least the first part of it. And it's called Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. And guess who just got up? Little Munchie. So I'll just read a few pages. In fact, I think I'll read one page. Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs by Judy Barrett and drawn by Ron Barrett. This is a book that your parents said they remember. Over one million sold, and 25 years they're celebrating their 25 years, I guess, since they put it out. We were all sitting around the big kitchen table. It was Saturday morning, pancake morning. Mom was squeezing oranges for juice. Henry and I were betting on how many pancakes we could each eat. And Grandpa was doing the flipping. Oops, long section. Seconds later, something flew through the air, headed toward the ceiling. And landed right on Henry. After we realized that the flying object was only a pancake, we all laughed, even Grandpa. Breakfast continued quite uneventfully. All the other pancakes landed in the pan, and all of them were eaten, even the one that landed on Henry. My guess is that this was the genesis of the book for the author. Maybe this happened, and that's how they got the idea to write this book. Suppose food fell from the sky. Now this book won't have quite the meaning for you that it might for an older child because you haven't had pancakes or spaghetti or meatballs or hot dogs, which you'll never have hopefully, or um, other things such as that. You get the point, but we read anyway. Okay, I forgot to turn the page. Did I? But I showed it to you, right? So we saw the them eating, and I showed you this bottom one too. We're all quite happy. We're all happy when we eat, even you. Oh my gosh, you're so beautiful and happy. I call it your chairman of the board pose. Yes, oh yes. You sort of uh, lay back, or you hold the bottle if I'm feeding you, and then you grunt a bit, and you just sort of like, life is good. <laughs> okay, back to the story. I love you so much. That night, Touched off by the pancake incident at breakfast, Grandpa told us the best tall tale bedroom story he'd ever told. Across an ocean, over lots of huge, bumpy mountains, across three hot deserts, and one smaller ocean. He tells a good story, because look at how far they're traveling to get to the location of the story. The deserts, the mountains, the oceans. There lay the tiny town of, how can I get you to see this? Chew and swallow. Chew and swallow. Funny name for a town. In most ways, it was very much like any other town. Maybe. It had a main street lined with stores, kind of like on your street down, down if you go down the hill when we go down there and you go down to pick your mom up from the, from the uh, train, the main street with the fun chops and the bakery and all that. It had, a main, it had a main street lined with stores, houses with trees and gardens around them, just like Maplewood. And just like where I live, they have that, but we don't have a main street with sh shops. We have too many of those stores. I mean, uh, roads, but whatever. A schoolhouse 
about 300 people and some assorted cats and dogs. Every town had cats and dogs. And pigs and fish and chickens and cows and grenouilles. Grenouilles. Moving on. But there were no food stores in the town of Chew and Swallow. No food stores. Curious. They didn't need any. Hmm. The sky supplied all the food they could possibly want. Really? Really? <laughs> Hello? The only thing that was really different about Chew and Swallow was its weather. It came three times a day at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Everything that everyone ate came from the sky. Really? Really? Which would be curious if, because we eat a little bit unusually. We have our smoothies. We have our stir fries we, with egg and such. We have really good baked goods. Well, a baked goods could fall on your head. And Soylent? I don't know how that would work. But moving on. Oh, look at the little dog watching at the window. Kind of like Julep and Nelly do. I love that. Whatever the weather served, that was what they ate. But it never rained, rain. It never snowed, snow. And it never blew just wind. It rained things like soup and juice. It snowed mashed potatoes and green peas. And sometimes the wind blew in storms of hamburgers. That could be interesting, could be fun. And as a mom, I have to say it could be a little messy. And we won't even get into the vegetarian aspect. Thank you. Oh, and look at the, t I, I didn't show you the bottom part. You see the town below and these giant droppings of food. The people could watch the weather report on television in the morning, and they would even hear a prediction of the next day's food. There's the guy on TV talking about the food that's coming, the weatherman, the dog underneath. Now that is a funky chair. That is triangles superimposed on each other. Very interesting picture. When the townspeople went outside, they carried their plates, cups, glasses, forks, spoons, knives, and napkins with them. That way they would always be prepared for any kind of weather. If there were leftovers, and there usually were, the people took them home, put them in their refrigerators in case they got hungry between meals. Look at that. Raining pancakes, raining cake, pie, I guess. Drumsticks from a chicken. Oh, soup in an umbrella. One more page and then we'll take a break until the next sitting of our book. The menu varied. By the time they woke up in the morning, breakfast was coming down. After a brief shower of orange juice, low clouds of sunny side up eggs, fried eggs that are not flipped over, they moved in, followed by pieces of toast, butter and jelly sprinkled down for the toast, and most of the time it rained milk afterwards. For lunch one day, frankfurters already in their rolls blew in from the northwest at about five miles an hour. They were, there were mustard clouds nearby. Then the wind shifted to the east and brought in baked beans. A drizzle of soda finished off the meal. Hmm, I don't particularly like any of those foods, but this is a story and we're going to keep the grum comments somewhat to a minimum. If that's possible. Okay, I said I would stop. Let's see if this is a good stopping point. Yes, this is a good stopping point to be continued next time. I hope you have a wonderful day, little Isaac, with everything you could possibly want to eat and do and warm sweaters to keep you warm. And, oh, sounds like another, one of my cats came inside because it's raining steadily here. Cozy day. I love you so much, little guy. See you later. Bye-bye.